going on, people? Welcome to another edition of Every Man is a Millionaire. I wanted to talk to you about something that is becoming more and more evident with the economy. One of the things that I have seen is the segmentation of the economy. Now, what do I mean by that? This jobs report came out and it looked better than what they predicted, like 215,000 jobs. They were predicting 195, 22,000 jobs, let's just say 150,000 jobs, I'll explain that later, were lost due to the retail depression. Now, they didn't count all of those jobs. They didn't count all of those jobs concurrently because it hadn't hit yet, but it will. So that 22 is probably gonna translate to 100,000 once the full effect hits when people in warehouses are laid off, when people in fast food restaurants that are close to these economic distribution centers or these malls are laid off. All of that stuff will come into play. What we're gonna have in this next recession is the vast scaling up of the 9.9%. We talk about the 0.3%, which is the billionaires, then we talk about the 1%, which is everyone that makes over $280,000. Now we're gonna talk about the 9.9%. These are people with a net worth of 1.2 to about $2.5 billion. You know some of these people. This is the group of people that are talked about in the millionaire next door. Let's say you're 50 years old, you bought a house, you stayed in it, your house is worth 400, 500K, it's paid off. Let's say you have 500K in the stock market. You're a millionaire right there. Then you count your possessions and stuff you have and money and savings. So you're probably at that 1.2 mark right there and you're 50, maybe 55 years old. Are you really rich? You have high net worth, you're, you don't have a lot of debt, but are you really rich? That's a question. That's something that needs to be answered. That's something that needs to be settled because I'm gonna make a prediction. And I want you to understand, remember when everybody was going crazy over Bitcoin? I was one of the few voices that said, don't buy it. It's gonna crash. I said this in December. I said this in December of 2017. I also said the recession was coming. December, actually I started talking about the recession because I saw the signals swirling about. I talked about that for almost a year. Well, we're upon the last hurrah. If you want to get your business rolling while times are good, now once again, if you're not in a position to get your business rolling, don't sweat it, you can still get it started through the recession, you're just gonna have to be more on point. But what's happening, this is the last hurrah, this is last fourth quarter before this thing really starts to start spreading across America like wildfire. This is it. For those of you who are in an okay position, for those of you who are potentially set up in a good position, this is the time to make your move. I got asked a question today and it wasn't a felonious question. It was just like, hey, Glendon, how do I vet you? Question, how do I make sure that you're legit? Fair question. Observe. I have people, virtually every time I give a chat, they're talking about how this course helped them, how the information's helped them. I've had people make 100K a year off the free information. So if you're asking that question, you more than likely are new and you want a streamlined answer. You want something that's gonna be wrapped in a nice little box with a bow on it. And I can give you that, but that goes against my philosophy because I believe that many of the testimonials are contrived and many of them are stacked. And what do I mean by stacked? Let's say I know someone right now that if I was to bring her under my wing, she'd be making six figures in six months. Why? Because she's got 75% of the materials, the agreement, 
the uh, intellectual property, the person, she's, she's got it. She's just missing 25%, filling that 25%. She's going to start flying. This is what they do to y'all. They stack the testimonials with people who are almost there, just missing a few pieces. So there you are, John, thinking that, hey, you know, they did it. I can do it too. And then you take the course and you spend the money and you struggle because you're not where they were. I've seen this over the last few years. This is why I don't do testimonials, even though they're scientifically proven to work. This is why I let you make up your mind. And if after nine years and all of the, the unsolicited testimonials, which I love the best, I don't ask people to do this. I don't pay people to do this. They just pop up and say, wow, man, this has helped me. Oh, I've been listening. to you." If you're missing that and you, you check the body of work and you still like need more, I can't help you. So with that, I say, keep watching. Hopefully you will get the message and God bless because one of the things that I'm very, very proud of, I've been doing this nine years. I've never told anyone to go in debt to get one of my courses or products. I've never told anyone to quit their job. I've never given anyone any bad stock advice because I live in the truth. I just said, do this, do this and do this. So if you need to vet me, take the free information and apply it. Well, well, dude, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do resale. I want to do what you want to do. Now, even though I've said this many times before, the reason I'm doing what I'm doing is because of resale. I got these skills talking to people, running a regular business. You don't want to do that. I have nothing else for you. I'm going to teach you the right way, which is going to be the correct way, which is going to be challenging. I am not going to give you any hustler porn. I'm not going to give you any short shortcuts. I'm not going to gas you up and say that you could be a millionaire in 12 months or even three years. But I will tell you that if you take action and you start working now, 10 years, you could be a millionaire. Really could. You could be like one of these 9.9 .9 percenters, have a house paid off, money in the bank. You can be the part of that 9.9 percent .9 of America that controls everything that the 0.3 percent doesn't. See, the billionaires need to control government because they have conglomerates. They have these big businesses that touch upon EPA, touch upon of uh, Sarns, Oxby. So they need to have connections. They need to get certain people elected. But if you're in that 9.9 point, that 9.9 percent, .9 which I am, you could kind of float under the radar. You could kind of do what you want. It's kind of like having that space inside the matrix that like the key maker and the other guy, I forget his name, but they were in the matrix, but they had a world within the matrix. And that's what the 99, 9.9% does. You can get there. It's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of sweat. It's going to take the right equipment. It's going to take the right techniques. It's going to take the right information. And maybe it'll be stocks. If you're a stock guy, maybe it'll be uh, Shopify. Maybe it'll be Amazon. See, everything's on the table. You guys have got to get started. Now, many, many years ago, I predicted this was going to happen in retail. And many people go on the channel, go to the front channel page and put in the search box warehouse. And you'll hear me years ago giving people don't open up a retail business. Do this. Get a warehouse, work from home, start an online business. And then once you have sustainable um, predictable monthly income. Then if you still have that urge to open up a, a store or something, all right, then do it then. But I talked about this and you want to know what the next wave is going to be. We'll pull up a chair. Let me tell you, we're going to see armed communities. We're going to see private schools with armed guards. Oh yeah. That's going to be a selling feature. They won't be walking around like the Israelis do with, you know, submachine guns. These guys will be in a uniform, possibly a suit with a Glock or a 40 cal strapped to their hip. 
There'll be ex-military. There'll be, oh, no, and you're going to see that. And you're going to see gated communities like you've never seen gated communities. You're going to see private security. If you want to get into a business, get into security right now. It's going to be a booming business because the 99.9% and the 1% and the zero, they're going to have money during this recession. They're still going to buy the Porsche. They're still going to buy their luxury homes. They're still going to take their trips. They're still going to sell their kids to private school. So you need to go ahead and start preparing for services and products for that group of people because they will have money. We'll have money all day long. And then also some of these 99.9 percenters are going to move into the 0.9 percent. These are individuals with net worths of five million or more. Some of these folks are going to move over there. It's going to be a lot of these Internet folks. I've told you my story. I told you what I'm doing. I told you how I'm doing it. Number one, I have set up this internet business because this is the future. I run six channels. You think I'm doing that for my health? I see where the world's going. I see that potentially policy and conduct, if I run it right, I could be interviewing next 2020 presidential candidates and Congress people. I could position myself for that right now. See, I'm thinking about that long game. I'm thinking about the future because it, it, it's, the future is so sweet for people who are taking the proper steps now. It's ridiculous. It ain't ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I plan to cross over into that zero point something percent. Sure do. Mm -hmm. And I want you guys to come join me. Because, see, if you just get into the 99 point percent during this recession, then you can leverage years later. Because, see, what, what's that saying? The rich get richer, the poor get poor. There's a reason for that. <laughs> it's a reason. I've seen it, and it comes down to a handful of things. Number one, choice. Number two, delayed gratification. Number three, using your ammunition. Yeah, that's a bullet. Each one of these are bullets. It's not a dollar, it's not fiat currency, it is a bullet. And the more bullets you have in your economic gun, the more shots you can take. The more shots you can take, the more likely you're gonna hit something. So if you got a lot of bullets in your economic gun, what, what? But if you're, and I'm going to talk to some of you business owners, because I know some of you listen to me. You got an Amazon business, you got an e-commerce business, you got maybe a car wash, and you're making 500 k a year, maybe even a million, and you're taking out like half or more. Stop doing that. Put yourself on the budget and take these, these bullets and load them in your economic gun. I've said this before, I don't have a high consumption lifestyle. I live probably on 10% or less of my income because I am shaping up for the future. I'm shaping up for my descendants who come after me to have a better life because this is one of the reasons and this is starting to change. Let's get racial. You hear all these talks about how the, the wealth gap. What they're doing is comparing the Warren Buffetts, the Bill Gates, the Robert Thompsons to you. And you compare it against, yeah, I mean, that's, that's an incredible gap. But see, the gap isn't that big between you and the 9.9%, .9%, which no one's really, we're starting to talk about them. Many white people, due to racism, segregation, Jim Crow, P Google this, government mortgage laws that actually said we, we're not going to finance any houses in any black neighborhoods. This is historical fact. This is, and I don't even like to call it black history. I like to call it American history because it happened in America. So those folks got a leg up. 
Well, guess what's happened? The dominant class, the so-called white people, they're failing. They're fluttering. They're stalling out. They're committing suicide. They're going on opioids. You know why? Because the system that was set up for them, and it was set up for them. George Washington was white. Thomas Jefferson was white. It was set up for white people. It's falling apart. It's no longer producing the results that it, it produced. Social constructs, social policy, social changes have changed that paradigm. I'm going to say something. And I know if y'all going to fall out and laugh as a Asianic black man with a lot of social and emotional intelligence. I have a greater shot at getting much more wealthier than a white guy of the same pedigree. I know you're like, whoa, whoa, what? Look in the numbers. Look at what's happening culturally. Look at what's happening socially. If you are a person, because, you know, right now, there ain't really nobody talking about black people. We're talking about Mexicans, we're talking about immigrants, talking about, hey, you've noticed that Trump has not really addressed the blacks. Right now, it's kind of like we're hidden. We can move like rangers. So instead of going like, well, Obama didn't do nothing for me. Obama didn't do shit to you. This Trump Justice Department, Jeff Sessions is rolling laws back as we speak. He's signing papers right now today. He is working 24 seven to set us back because he has this false assumption that we can bring white America back. Ain't gonna happen. It's just not. It's not. It's a done deal. They're gonna they're gonna try to slow some stuff down. They, you know they're gonna probably stack the Supreme Court. It's not gonna matter because due to this wonderful medium that I'm talking to you, the internet, a lot of black people have figured some shit out. It's like oh, I can do this and I can get rich and I can end a lot of the vestiges of racism because see if someone calls you outside your name that's racism if someone calls the police on you for doing something pedestrian that is racism but it's racism that has no teeth many of you are going after these permit patty uh barbecue becky which i really applaud and i think that's that was so cool because Permit Patty, she's catching it, right? She's catching all kind of L. She's catching some big L. She sells weed and her, one of her main suppliers cut her off. But that's just not something worth fighting, in my opinion. You know, if you could fight it socially on the Internet and create a movement, cool. But if someone called me outside my name, I just look at them like, but I'm richer than you and I fuck hotter chicks than you. So go on. If that's all you got. That's all you got. Go for it. It make you feel good. It, it, you feel better now. You got it off your chest. Great. Because my kids are going to be richer than yours. My line is just going to do better than yours because you're focusing on the wrong thing with your racist ass. See, the truth is coming out due to the Internet, due to all of these wonderful things that are happening. People are becoming educated. People are starting to understand that, oh my God, I have been lied to. I'm not as special as I thought I was because see, and it's, that's not like a white person problem. It is a, an American problem. Many of us, we don't have the skills to compete with these immigrants. We just don't. And that's not inherently bad. But the problem is many of us don't want to learn these skills. Going back to the free information. I got a free audio book. I got some really super cheap courses to get you started. But a lot of you like millennials, I ain't trying to start at the bottom. I want to start in mid-management or sh I want to start at the top. And unless your daddy or your mama is a millionaire with a corporation that they can say, come on in and work for the family business. You just ass out of luck, player. You gonna have to start at the bottom. Right now, there's an interesting, and Google this. People are committing communes. 
This was something that was very popular in the 70s, and this is another one of my social signals. You got 15, 22 people who are not related living in the same house. They're putting their money together. They're buying food in bulk. You know why? Because it's too hard to live out here on your own and the traditional nuclear family has broken down. Unless you're rich. If you are rich and you're in that 99 point percent, I actually saw a, a family. They were having some kind of celebration. They all had, uh, God, one of those things that you, in Hawaii, the, the little things around your neck, they had those on. They eventually had some family event and there was like 22 of them. And then I saw the dude go up and pay for everybody and he pulled out his Platinum American Express. That told me a lot right there. See, the 99 point, the 9.9% .9 is still having family reunions. They're still having cookouts. They're still meeting. They're still sending their kids to summer camp. And in these meetings and connections, this is where these kids are starting to network. See, if you can move into the 9.9%, you give your kids a better life by virtue of who your neighbors are and who the kids they go to school with. Those are some huge factors that a lot of people like, I don't want to be around no people. Oh, we need to separate and form our own perfect union in these United States of America. And you know, that's not a bad idea, but see, there's one little problem. It'll take you about 150, 200 years to catch up that way. 150, 200 years to catch up, if you ever catch up. But cross-pollination, integration, learning the lay of the land, learning the legal, the four mandates of the disruptive male, economics, your body, your spirit, and then women. But see, many of y'all got the game backwards. It's women, body, spirit, and then economics, if economics is even on the list. It's completely out of order. Completely. But what you can do, how you can do it, how you can build, how you can create is to invest in yourself and invest in America. Yeah, I said it. This whole notion of we're going to create our own separate perfect union, it ain't going to happen. Now, I want you to understand, I predicted the recession, which hadn't happened yet. I predicted the crash of Bitcoin. I could predicted retail depression. See, this is what's going to happen. This, this recession thing is going to come like a tsunami. It's just going to be like, oh, the water's cool. Everyone's doing good. Boosh. It's going to come like a tornado, a hurricane. It's going to be that sudden and it's going to be that dangerous because a lot of people are not preparing. They're like, well, times are good. Unemployment's low. I can get a job anytime I want to. That's going to change in the next 12 to 20 months. And it's going to be lugubrious. It's going to be dark. Because see, I predict unemployment is really about 22%. Mm -hmm. When you count all the people who have part-time jobs, all the people who stop looking, about 22% of the country can't find a job that wants to work. So we got like 22, 30% of the country that's retired. So that's like half of the country that ain't working. That's a problem. But here's how I see it. You can rail against the social injustices, which you should because it's making progress. But you should also at the same time start stacking your chips and trying to climb into that 9.9%. Because at 9.9%, they dictate local policy. See, once again, the billionaires, they have these lobbyists. They pay millions of dollars a year to impact social policy at the federal level. Well, the 9.9%, they control the local government level. This is why all of these people are succeeding from counties. The wealthiest part, I live, in, I live in the neighborhood that did that, Sandy Springs. They succeeded from Fulton County and took all their millions, actually billions, excuse me, took their billions and they formed a city. Just built a brand new city hall and all this other stuff. Because there's some money out here. Now, this is what's going to happen. You're going to see this because it's already happening. You're going to see it take fire. 
that all of the counties, all the rich neighborhoods that can succeed, they will. If the if the courts let them, because typically what they want to do is take their money and put it into a school system for their kids, not those kids across town who just happen to be black and Hispanic. That's all. Most of the times it could be a little, you know, what they call not me, poor white trash. It could be some of them. But this is going to happen. This is not going to reverse itself. So either you could beat your fist against the table, poke your eye out, or you can get in that 9.9% where your kid can be one of those kids. I hate to break it to you like this. I know we have a lot of we need to save the world. Ain't going to happen. You know why? Because the people who need the most saving don't really give a damn about their situation. They're happy where they are. Because if they were unhappy, if they were highly dissatisfied with their lot in life, they would facilitate change. They would change their habits. True story. They're okay where they're being. They're fine. And this is why we're going to have a permanent underclass. And if you ain't careful, it can just reach up there and snatch you up. Part of the problem is that many people have this presumption that the United States of America is a fair country. The United States of America is one of the biggest motherfuckers on the planet, if not the biggest motherfucker on the planet. It's a cold hearted country. And anything that we do that's altruistic is usually in our best interest. This is why we have Social Security. We don't want to be putting a bullet to grandma's head because she's got needs to be put out the pasture because she can't work. That's in our self-interest. It's not for that person. And I do believe we're going to have a basic income and then it will not be for the people. It will be for the government, the 9.9 percent, the 1 percent and the, you know, the. Um, 0.3 percent. To keep the heathens off of them and their kids. That's why we're going to have a basic income. Not because it's the right thing to do. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's always an angle. So I'm just coming here to talk to you guys today to give you a wake up call to say, hey, you need to get it in gear. You need to really stand up. You need to pay attention. Because many of these things can be controlled by you. No, you can't control if someone hits your car or you come down with some random illness. You can't control that. But this is a doctrine that I live my life by. Most days are good. Most days you get up, you do what you're going to do. You're going to go to work. Most days you go to work. Most days your car start. Most days you eat. Most days you work out. Most days, you know, you hang out with your girl, you hang out with your dudes, you, you, you kiss your kids, you walk them to school, you help them with their home. Most days go correctly. Most days. So if you did the right thing, most days, those bad days, those dark days, those rainy days, those turbulent days, they're typically not that bad. Like I told you my story. If I, I was a hardworking dude. I worked for my family. I was proud, you know. I went to work with holes in my shoes. But the fam looked good. I was cool with that. But see, I didn't really care about me. I was selfless. And I didn't start becoming successful till I became selfish. See, everyone wants someone to be selfless, to help someone. Don't ask for any remuneration. Just, you know, just do it out the goodness of your heart. Yet these same people 